Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and what I'm going to do today is walk you through how to use my uh, my tools that are available on TrueDFS uh, to help build uh, MLB lineups. Now, this is not a complete comprehensive review of all the things we have on TrueDFS for MLB. You know, we're going to have preview videos, we're going to have live before lock, live streams, we're going to have uh, Bobby is going to be probably putting his plays of the day um, and, and extra content. Rody is going to be able to probably put in some extra content as well. What I'm completely focusing on now are using my sheets and Saberson to build lineups because that's my process. Um, and I wanted to kind of walk everybody through what you're looking at here when you subscribe to TrueDFS. And I'm gonna show you how to maybe build a single entry lineups using the tools um, and then uh, some MME builds as well. So when you are a premium member, what you get is this view, which is the uh, projections page. Um, you'll see that there is a tab for DraftKings, FanDuel, and then also DK Stacks and FanDuel Stacks, which we're gonna get to. So we're going to be focusing on DraftKings, but we'll, we'll, we'll show you the differences uh, in a minute. So you're going to see this kind of these columns of players, uh, teams, positions, salaries, fantasy points, and other things. And the key columns that you're going to want to look at are, well, fantasy points for sure, but points per dollar, which we have in this column, and also Sheets Value Score, which we have over here. Now, with Sheets Value Score is just my own kind of proprietary assessment of a player's fantasy points relative to value, relative to upside, and things like that. Um, the default is the Sheets Value Score rank rankings, but you can filter front by position, by salary, by fantasy points, however you want. Now, what these columns here are, just so you know, a standard deviation fantasy points, standard deviation ownership. What this means is, is how, how tight these projections are. In other words, we, we take kind of a poll of the industry and, and weight them and things like that. But this is kind of a measuring stick for how tight they are. The lower the number, the better here. I almost don't even want to put this number on here because it's way too confusing um, and somewhat misleading sometimes. But uh, I figured we may as well just keep it here. There's no real practical use for this number, except to kind of gauge, like if, if you see a, a projection which seems kind of off to you, uh, if you see a, a high standard deviation in fantasy points, then that would probably explain it. Um, similarly, with this ownership, th this is the projected ownership, but even here we have this column standard deviation owned, which indicates how, you know, variant the ownership projections are. Like, for example, with Shane McClanahan, you'll see that, that there's a pretty decent discrepancy between where different places think he's going to be owned, um, whereas Garrett Cole is very, is very, very tight. So when you're, you're making assessments based on ownership, it will give you kind of a, kind of a, a uh, you know, kind of a measuring stick for how tight these numbers really are. Um, so all this is well and good, but what do you, what do, you do with all this information? Um, you could build single entry lineups with this, but the thing about baseball is, is that it's so heavily weighted towards correlation that to just take, like, say, the top-rated first baseman, the top-rated outfielder, top-rated second baseman, or whatever, make a lineup out of that, that could be probably okay for cash games, but when you're trying to win tournaments, you have to build correlative lineups, which means you have to come up with decent stacks. You have to find multiple players that are from the same team that are going to benefit from each other's, you know, from each other's performance. One guy gets a home run and three guys are on base. They all get the score runs and they all have mass fantasy points, for example. Um, so that's why baseball, it's, it's pretty well known that you're supposed to stack most of your lineups. I mean, we could, we could argue back and forth about whether you should be four-man or five-man or whatever, but there has to be some degree of correlation in your lineups. 
So the other thing that I did was I compiled this tab called DK Stacks. And this is the thing that confuses uh, some people, um, but I just wanna kind of go through it. So what this does is this separates by team, okay? And what this will do is rate the top stack for each team against each other. So what we're doing here, because it's, it's DraftKings, is we're taking the top five projected players, okay, rated by different metrics. And we'll get to that in a minute. Right. Um, and then you could sort by team and sort by whatever. But I just want to go through this with you. So this first column here is called raw stack. So what this means is basically just you sum up the top five projected points for each team, for the top five guys from each team. And then that becomes that raw stack. Like So, for example, Atlanta at 44.50. That's basically the projected points of all of these five guys, okay? Um, that's why it's called raw stack. And then you can just basically sort by which team rates to, you know, score the most fantasy points, right? Um, now, this other column here, raw own, that is, again, the top five projected scorers and a sum of their ownership. Okay. Um, now you could argue whether you should do product versus sum or whatever, but here we're just doing some. It's some of their ownership. Um, so when you're rating these guys by raw stack, okay, um, it's just the sum of their fantasy points. When you're rating them by raw ownership, it's it's the sum of the ownership of the five highest projected players. Now this next group, value stack. What all this does is it takes the top five point per dollar stacks or, or, or players, and it creates a stack out of those five players. So you might see different, for example, players in the value stacks than in the raw stack players. And you rate them by value stacks. It's just basically point per dollar. Um, and likewise, value ownership again it just takes the top five projected point per dollar players in a stack and it sums up their ownership but don't worry we're going to get to how to analyze this in a minute. now what modified stack is 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 what this does is it rates the top five sheets value score players okay so remember raw stack just top five fantasy points uh value stack top five point per dollar Modified stack means top five sheets value scores. And what this does, it adds up the projected sheets value score or the sheets value score for all five of those players. And then modified ownership is again, it, it, it adds up the projected ownership of the top five sheets value score players. Okay. Um, so that you, we provide three different ways for you to analyze you know, various stacks. Now, this may seem a little confusing, but but uh, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a uh, couple of couple of pointers here regarding which column you want to use if you are you know going to use these to hand build lineups. When you sort by raw stack, what you're usually going to get are really high priced um, stacks. So so essentially which kind of stack that you want to search for is going to depend to some degree on where you're going to go with pitching. Okay. Um, if you have a slate where you have to play like two high priced pitchers, then sorting by raw stack is not going to help you too much because it might end up being too expensive. Okay. Um, however, if you can pay down for pitching, then just sorting for raw stack is probably a good idea. Now, with respect to value stacks, you're going to want to use that when you really want to pay up for pitching. You know, if you really want to pay up for pitching and, you know, you're going to be salary constrained at the hitting positions, you're going to just want to pick the stacks that have the highest point per dollar. So that's where 
you're more likely to look at value stack ranges. And if you have kind of a mix of, you know, one, one high price pitcher, one low price pitcher, or two mid-range pitchers, which is what you're usually going to get, then you're going to want to sort by modified stack. Okay. Um, now, there are some tricks that you can use. I mean, sometimes you'll find stacks that appear in all three columns. If so, those are usually very, very strong tricks. And other things that you're going to have to, you know, kind of learn by doing it is, is what's good. You know what I mean? Like, is 107 good? Is 103 good? What, what type of discrepancy between these, uh, you know, uh, is worth, for example, playing a much higher owned stack? You know, like, like this one, for example, we're going to sort by modified stack. And you'll see that Minnesota, even though they're the highest modified stack score, they're not even the highest owned. So this is the way you can kind of visualize these, these, these tables and have it help you create kind of baseball baseball lineups. Um, so going back, you know, how we'd actually do this, and again, we're gonna talk about how to use SaberSim and how to build MME lineups in a minute. But the thing about how to use this on an actual slate, which is, this is, we're gonna use opening day as an example, but again, this is process. We'd like to, you know, build tools and build, uh, processes for you guys to go back to, you know, time and time again. What we're going to first look at is the pitchers. And fortunately, it's usually the pitchers that are the highest sheets value scores anyway. So they're always going to appear at the top. And the first thing that we'll notice is that you have three guys that probably stand out over everybody else. You know, you have Shane McClanahan at a 56. Garrett Cole at a 53 and Corbin Burns at 50 as far as value score goes. And then a decent size drop to the next guy uh, being Blake Snell. So you're probably going to want to play two of these three. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that uh, is that these guys are very, very reasonably priced for, you know, for, for their skill sets. Now, part of it is because, you know, first couple of rotations that you might not go a full seven, eight innings. But yet still, these appear to be very reasonably priced, you know, priced pitchers. There's nobody over 10K, for example. So I, I mentioned that because if you play even the top two pitchers here, as far as, you know, uh, salary goes, you might be able to get away with, with, with playing stacks that are, you know, that, that, that otherwise you might not be able to get to. Um, but for, for now, what I'd like to do is just kind of start building a lineup and seeing what we can do here. Um, so right here, let's just, just take the top two guys, you know, Shane McClanahan and, and Garrett Cole. Let's put them actually in a lineup. So we would put in, to show you what it looked like, we put in Shane McClanahan and we put in Garrett Cole. So you'll see that after putting these guys in, you still have, you know, you have plenty of money left. 4162 per player is definitely plenty of money. So when you go back to the stacks tab, um, you're, you're going to see that even if you sort by raw, you might be able to get in who you want. Now, the good thing is, is that Atlanta and Minnesota are showing up as, and this is the way I look at these things, Atlanta is showing up as the top raw stack by, you know, some amount, not that big of a deal. And then close between Minnesota, San Diego, Baltimore, Boston. It's, it's very, very close. And when you sort by modified stacks, again, it's the same real teams. Like Minnesota is definitely at the top of the list. So, so we're going to start by trying to see if we can get in these Minnesotas. Now, one thing you kind of cheat here is what I like to do is, well, if we can get all five of these guys in, great. But if you can't, what I'd like to do is try to find guys that are in both stacks, like uh, Byron Buxton. He doesn't appear in modified stack probably because he's expensive. But you'll see Joey Gallo is in both. Jose Miranda is in both. And Max Kepler is in both. So those are three really strong plays. But let's just see if we can't get the Buxton, Correa, 
Gallo, Miranda, and Kepler all in. So let's put this in. Let's go to Minnesota. We will go with Miranda, um, Correa, um, was it Buxton, Kepler, Gallo? Let's just put them all in here. So you could actually do this really easily, you know, uh, on, on this particular slate. And you're really getting just the raw, top raw point scatter. So this is going to be a very easy way to build just using the, the sheets here. Now, again, we're not taking into account ownership because, listen, if I could do this really easily, then everybody can too. But one thing that's interesting, again, is that, and this is how you're using this stuff, you see that actually the top uh, stack on the slate uh, from an ownership perspective is Atlanta. So this is always, it's already a very, very strong way to play by just sorting and then seeing how your, your how, you know, whatever your ranking is compares to the ownership projection. Now, what do you do with the rest of your lineup? So there, there's a couple of, of schools of thought here. You know, you, you could, either try to just play three one-offs or you could try to get kind of a mini stack out of out of the others maybe like a five two or a five one or something like that so what i what i like doing in a situation like this is well let's go back to the regular rankings and we'll just kind of just sort here again by sheets value score and see if there's anybody that we didn't use already that kind of stands out. So you see Mark, um, you see Ozuna at 2,900. Very, very strong, you know, uh, value score here at 20. Then you have Grisham, you have Friedel. These are all outfielders. Um, and you could just go through these and kind of pick your one off based on on value score, you know, and, and, and um Where's my lineup? And you want to, you know, start with a catcher, a second baseman, third baseman. So what you could do is you could just sort by, 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 uh, by catcher, for example. We got to find. We, unfortunately, we have a lot of players listed today. That'll be that'll be tightened up um, once we have starters and things like that. But you'll see that, you know, Sean Murphy, top catcher, at 19.78. And he's also doesn't hurt that he's from that same, you know, good Atlanta stack that that rates really well. So, you know, maybe, maybe put him in, for example. Now, again, we don't even know starters. So so these guys might not even be playing. And then you just continue on. And and that's the way that I would use my sheets to build kind of single entry, just regular lineups. Okay. Um, now, we're going to violate a very important rule of, uh, of demonstrations is that you're supposed to double check and make sure everything works before you do a demo. But in, in the absence of that, we are, we're going to gamble here and we're going to go and, and, and try to demo this without having double checked. And we haven't done this since the last season, so it's possible this all fails. But... If you want to build lineups without the sheet, without doing visually, and you want to use an optimizer, there are two things you could do from the bottom up. So the first thing you could do is use R optimizer, which is admittedly very, um, very primitive. Okay, but we do have it, and I will just try to give a, a demonstration on how this works. It's probably going to fail, and if it does, we will tweak it. But um, this is just a regular optimizer. And what this will let you do, you can either upload your own projections or what's probably better, and this is kind of cool, is you can load whatever projections are within TrueDFS, you know, on those tables um, to, to this page. If in fact it works, and it did, look at that. Last update 30 minutes ago. So you could generate as many lineups as you want with the amount of unique players as you want, but if you want to just generate one, um, one lineup, you could just click on this 
And again, with any luck, there it is. It, it'll it'll generate a lineup for you. And what this is basically doing is is creating the optimal lineup based on based on my projections. So you play something like this and just kind of throw it in. Um, and that's definitely something that uh, you could do. And you could export these results into Excel and all of that. I can't believe it worked. Um, however, if you want to be a little more advanced, you, you'll, you'll use SaberSim. And, and SaberSim, again, there's a lot of optimizers out there. And, you know, Roto Grinders HQ is, is, is good. Fantasy Crunch is good. These are, and then there are these new, these new simulation based um, optimizers of which SaberSim is one of them, which uh, I've been using for quite a while. And I will show you how to use that along with my tools to build, to build lineups. So, uh, we're going to do a more in-depth uh, SaberSim tutorial, but just with respect to using the tools, there, there are two ways you can get there. One is having a, a SaberSim membership within TrueDFS, and the other one is just having a SaberSim uh, subscription outside of DFS. But in either way, you can use our you could use my sheets to um, to help with this. So what you do is we got to go back to the projection page. Um, that'll show up one of these days. Right. So you'll notice that in SaberSim, there's this list of, of, of SaberSim projections that there's a tab for my projections. If you just want to use SaberSim's projections, then that's fine. And you could default, we could have another tutorial on how to use SaberSim, which is going to be different than this. But if you want to use um, TrueDFS's projections in place of SaberSims, it's actually really, really easy to do. So what you can do is from this page, this is this is actually the long way, is from this page, you just hit CSV and it will create this kind of file. Then you'll go back into SaberSim and you'll hit upload. You'll hit upload CSV. Then you will find that um, that file you just created, and what it will do is automatically upload to SaberSim um, the TrueDFS projections. We click exclude unlisted players and we save it, and now you'll see that my projections have trumped the SaberSim projections in what we're going to be using. And then uh, what you do is you can build lineups using SaberSim. Again, I'm not going to do a full you know thing on how to use SaberSim, just for as an example. I want to build one lineup using SaberSim. We'll just we'll just do that. And again, we'll, we'll do a full other full SaberSim uh, demo with the SaberSim people, hopefully within the next day or so. But just to kind of show you like how to use the tools, you you'll download the, the CSV file literally just like that, and then you'll upload it to SaberSim, and and then it will build lineups. Let's just see. I only built one lineup, so let's see what it comes up with. I wonder if it's very similar to what I came up. Um, yeah, I mean, well, that, actually, these guys want to play. Look, a combination of Braves and Twins, which certainly makes a lot of sense. So, and with with Cole and, and McLennan. So, um, so that's the way you can download the CSV and go straight up to Saberson that way. The other thing we could do, and this is not working exactly right now, but if you are a Saberson subscriber within TrueDFS, what you would do is you would click on Tools. SaberSim, this th what you're doing here is accessing SaberSim through the TrueDFS interface. Now we're gonna, I don't think it's gonna be working quite yet because we have to make a couple of tweaks. But what this will do most of the time is it will automatically replace, well, it will give you a choice between the SaberSim projections and the TrueDFS projections. You could average them. You could do all kinds of stuff. But right now, we're just kind of upgrading it. But um, you'll see that all in these columns. And then you could just build lineups straight from here. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything that I forgot, but I don't think that I have. Um, so, again, you're, you're, this is, again, not a full suite of, you know, of solutions to building lineups. This is just the part that has to do with my sheets. So again, this is same thing for FanDuel. The one thing I would say that's different for FanDuel 
is that, and this should have made sense, is that the FanDuel stacks, they only have four players because you have, can only play a maximum of four players from each team in on, uh, on FanDuel. But it's the same type of thing. You're ranking them the same way, you're exporting the same way, and things like that. Um, so that will do it. Hopefully this helps. If you had any questions, you can message in the Discord. I'm more likely to respond to the premium Discord channel, which of course you have to be a premium member to join. Um, and you can also uh, message support as well. But that's basically how to use my sheets to help uh, build uh, and analyze MLB lineups.